I hadn't realized James isn't finished, but yeah. I'm going in. Oh, it's it's not enough. It's not enough to read the Quran. Okay. You read you know, like uh, I was saying this to the guy who taught me Islam. Well, what was he saying? This is in religious studies. He was saying my level of knowledge of Islam was at the um, grad school level. That's not the primary school level. That's a grad school level. It's equivalent of having four years of university specializing in, in uh, religious studies and specializing, specializing in Islam, grad school level. And how did I get it? It wasn't by reading this kind of garbage. It was by reading the Quran. But he was saying, you know, I was saying, you know, it's required reading the Quran. He said, well, you, you know, like, uh, that's kind of like, uh, you're showing your Protestant upbringing, you know, like uh, funda fundamentalist Protestant upbringing. And, yeah, that's uh, what's called the genetic fallacy. There's too much of these kind of fallacies going around at university. What he didn't realize is I've read substantial parts of the series, which are considered, I guess, by most Muslims as uh, holy writ as well. Maybe not as fundamental, let's say, as the Quran. But what is it? It's, uh, it is, uh, well, there's more than one, I gather, but a uh, uh, biography of Muhammad's life. You see, what, what's important about that? You, Sharia law is based on what Muhammad did and said. It's not just in the Quran. It's what he did. So this stuff, what he did, uh, some of it was recorded in uh, the autobiography or autobiographies. And, uh, or not autobiographies, biographies, right? It's early in the morning. So, uh, in order to get an understanding of Sharia law, it's not enough just to look at the Quran. you got to look at uh, what, uh, because Islam, more than anything, is about law. It's about lots of other things. There's theology, and uh, there's uh, presumably uh, stuff like aesthetics and all. But it's really about, uh, to a certain extent, about theology, but it's primarily about law. Christianity is more about theology than it is about law. Judaism is more about law than it is theology and uh, I think there's only one belief system be more about law than Islam I don't think it is, it's uh, communism actually you, know, like, you do it or else what you think, just so long as you don't express it, uh, that's okay but uh, so there's certain belief systems that are more about law and there's certain ones that are more about theology things like that so uh, uh, the series it is required reading to read at least some of this here, some of the biography of uh, uh, Mohammed. And then, uh, required reading is read at least some of the hadiths, which are the basis of Sharia law. And what are these? These are kind of uh, records of what Muslims, uh, what Mohammed rather, said and did. And they claim to have a chain of evidence that goes back to Mohammed or his contemporaries, like Aisha, and, uh, his favorite wife. You got to read this stuff if you want to actually talk about this stuff, at least to me, and uh, or to other people. If I hear about you out there yipping and yapping about Islam, saying it's this, that, and the other thing, I don't care if you're right wing, left wing, center. If you belong to the religion, don't belong to the religion, uh, are are for it or against it or somewhere a neutral. I don't want to hear you yipping and yapping if you actually haven't read the foundational documents. That's all I've got to say. This is not adequate. It doesn't have any. It, it's clueless about Islam. It's especially clueless about defeating Islam. It's operating on a very bad uh, paradigm. You know, the Japanese uh, got into huge trouble uh, in World War II because they they were fighting their previous war or previous wars really. Um, they were fighting this their their current war, their present war, World War II on the basis of what happened in previous wars. What happened in previous wars? Well, they'd gained territory from the Germans in World War II, one, as I recall. And, but they were on the side of the English. And definitely they were on the side of the English in the uh, Russo-Japanese War, 1904-1905. And, uh, you know, the big trouble with the uh, that war, they're on the side of the English. They thought they'd beat the Russians single-handedly. What happened is the Russians had to send, kind of like their Atlantic fleet, over to the Pacific, and they couldn't go through the Arctic. They didn't send it over the Trans-Siberian Express because it didn't, they basically didn't exist, and so they had to send it around, around the world, uh, you know, like around much of the world. They had to go. Uh, the British would, didn't let the Russians go through the Suez Canal. 
it existed by then, but why would they? The Brits were uh, the allies of the Japanese. So the, the Russians had to go around all of Africa, they had to go around most of Europe, then all of Africa, then around India and through the Straits of Malacca. Where do you go through the Straits of Malacca? You go by Singapore. Singapore was a, a British possession. But all the way along, the, the, the Russians had to coal, and they got the French to, uh, to uh, be complicit with them, to give them coal, but uh, the French didn't have any holdings. They had holdings in West Africa, but in the south part of Africa, they didn't. So they're going along begging the British, can we coal at, at, your, uh, at your enclaves along? And the Brits are saying, yeah, well, why would we? We're on the side of the Japanese here. You're on the wrong side here. We're, we're not going to cooperate with you. So they finally limp into uh, the Pacific and they get straits of Tsushima to get wiped out by the Japanese. So uh, the Japanese didn't understand. What happened was the Brits actually won that war for them as much as anything and uh, the other thing is uh, they were thinking hey you know we defeat a western power well they defeated an, a western non-power the the I think we actually looked at it, we find the Japanese started industrializing maybe 1869 somewhere around there when did the Russians start industrializing the 1890s they were behind the Japanese so wow and so they after that they're figuring they can take on the United States in World War II, surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Wow, talk about stupidity. The Americans at that point in time had 33%, roughly a third of the world's economic power. And you, nowadays, it might be one half of that, 17%. Is it time we to We gotta end go. Up? We okay. gotta go. Okay, there we go. So anyway, now you yeah, can't forget breakfast. about it. You know, read the book for the appendices. <laughs>